Welcome to the night sky, your monthly guide to the best objects and events that you can get out to see in amateur astronomy. Whether you're a casual fan of space or have years of experience in this hobby, there'll be something for you to go out and see or image from your own backyard in this video. Now, sadly for the month of September, there are no major meteor showers to report on. So let's jump straight to the best views of our closest neighbor, the moon. Our first stop this month is the moon. And it's one of the best objects to go out to observe or image for anyone, but especially those of you who are brand new to this hobby. For the phases this month, let's start with the first quarter moon on September 3rd. It's around this time that you will get the best views of the moon through a pair of binoculars or a telescope. The sun's light comes in at an angle and the surface really comes alive with the mountains and craters showing off their depth. On the night of September 10th, the full moon will rise just as the sun sets, washing out most dim objects in the night sky. The month ends with the last quarter moon on September 17th and a new moon on the 25th. Let's take a look at some opportunities this month where we're going to have the moon and some of the planets pairing up nicely for you to go out to observe or image. On September 7th and 8th, the moon will be paired nicely with Saturn followed by Jupiter on the 10th and 11th, and Mars on the 16th and 17th. See if you can spot these events with the naked eye or a pair of binoculars, and be sure to let me know about this or any other observations that you're able to do this month in the comments section below. Let's begin our tour of the solar system by taking a look at the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. Mercury starts off the month low to the horizon as the sun sets, and that only gets worse as the month goes on. Switching times of day, we find Venus doing a very similar thing, but this time in the east, moving lower to the horizon as the sun rises. Our friendly red neighbor Mars starts to have nice views in the east around 2 a.m. this month. Near it is Uranus, and then we have Neptune, which is at opposition with Earth on September 16th. Of all the planets in our solar system this month, I want to spend most of our time in this video talking about the two best to go out right now to view an image, Saturn and Jupiter. Let's begin with Saturn. Saturn is great to go out and see throughout the entire month in the southeast right after sunset. If you own a pair of binoculars or a telescope, go outside and see what the lowest magnification is that you can do while still being able to make out the rings. I can barely make out the rings in a pair of binoculars at 15 times magnification, but I really need a telescope with at least 30 times magnification to begin enjoying the sight. My best views of Saturn through my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope are normally around 100 times magnification on most nights, but sometimes I like to push it up to 200 times magnification when the skies are crystal clear and steady. For those of you that are into astrophotography, I've recently made a video on my experience going out to image Saturn, and I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description below if you'd care to check it out. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Now let's move on to the crown jewel of the nighttime sky this September, the king of the planets, Jupiter. Jupiter and Earth approach opposition on September 26th, meaning that Earth pretty much falls in between the Sun and Jupiter. This will have Jupiter rise right when the Sun sets. Go outside after 11 p.m. to begin your views of Jupiter in the southeast, with the best views and imaging opportunities coming after midnight when it's higher in the sky. This is my favorite planet to observe and image, and I can't wait to get out to take some more shots of it later this month. In terms of other objects in the solar system this month, there's still a slight opportunity for some of us to go out and see the comet K2 Panstars before it gets too low to the horizon. Early this month, it's gonna pass by the star Juba in the constellation Scorpius, 
but shortly thereafter, it will be too low for any nice observations or images. If you're able to go out and take a picture of any object in our solar system this month, be sure to head over to Instagram and tag me at Late Night Astronomy to share the images that you're able to take. I'd love to see the pictures that you're out taking of the nighttime sky. As we move on to objects outside of our own solar system, we're going to focus on one section of space that is particularly impressive this time of year to go out to observe an image. And it is the literal core of our own galaxy known as the Milky Way. From where I live in the Northern Hemisphere, this is one of the best times to get out to observe and image this part of the sky. As you're scanning the Milky Way, stop by and take a look at M11, the Wild Duck Cluster. This is one of the most impressive open clusters in the night sky, almost appearing as a globular cluster due to its density. Next, move your way down the Milky Way and look for the Eagle Nebula, M16, and the Omega Nebula, M17. Just below that is the large Sagittarius star cloud which was so dense that I actually had to go to a darker sky just to verify that I wasn't looking at a blur of light pollution from my own backyard. Next we have the Trifid Nebula. At roughly the size of a full moon, this can be a breathtaking view through binoculars and a telescope under dark skies. Just below Trifid, we have a star-forming region of space known as the Lagoon Nebula. While best viewed with binoculars or a telescope, it can be viewed with the naked eye under good sky conditions and almost no light pollution. Finally, work your way down the Milky Way to M6, the Butterfly Cluster, and M7, Ptolemy's Cluster. My best experience observing the Milky Way was about 30 minutes from my home under darker skies with no distractions where I could slowly move through the density and beauty of the center of our galaxy. Under the right conditions, you'll lose track of time and get lost in the wonders of our galaxy. Those are just some of the best objects that you can go out to see or image in the nighttime sky for the month of September. If there's anything I've left off this list or any experience that you'd like to share with others, please be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support in clear skies from late night astronomy.